The message which I want to bring today is entitled Courtesy. And Courtesy means politeness. Courtesy means thoughtful, being thoughtful to others, having respect one for another. And there's a little while when a Kent was speaking concerning about the thousand children or two thousand children, and I said, Where is the courtesy? If I have my children, I don't need them to have to be immunized. I think they should respect that instead of sending my children back home. You see, having respect, because you know, to be immunized, you put in a foreign body, a foreign substance into the body, something that the body does not recognize, in that part of the human atomy. You put in a foreign something, a foreign substance, which is very harmful. So immunization is not something very good because, as you said, rightly said, we do not know exactly where the substance went from. Is it from a snake? Is it from a horse? Is it from a pig? We do not know. But you know, that's a, these are the sources, most of the times, these things come from. So we have to you know, defend and, and, and do what is right, and especially for our children. And not because that the, the, the authority wants that to happen, but we have to protect our children. And this is one of the ways we can do that, by standing for what is right. And that's where courtesy comes in. Being thoughtful and respecting and being polite to each other. I listened to the, the, the budget speech, the budget speech, and I noticed that the government had you know, reduced all the tax, which I think is very good. And I said, okay, this also is courtesy. The government is very thoughtful, being up, you know, the workers of this country. They're going to reduce taxes. Young children will get special attention. And your transportation and everything like that will be better. Health care will be better. And life will be much easier for each of the members of the, of the community. And I thought this was very thoughtful of the government. We want to reduce taxes. It may not be as what we want it to be, but it's, not, it's, 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 it's something in the right direction. And I think it was very good after listening to those things. And I wish it could happen in my country also. I feel very happy about that. But let us go through the word of God and see exactly how we could amuse ourselves with the word of God. Turn with me in Acts chapter 27 and verse 3. You know when you listen to the, the television, listen to the news, there are a lot of things that happen current affairs. And you ask yourself why such things is happening. I remember just day last week or this week that the president of Iraq, not Iraq, but um, that's that that um, this country that making the nuclear thing. Iraq. 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 He said that if the Americans going to attack him, he will bomb Israel. That was his statement. If the Americans want to try to do anything to destroy his nuclear facility, the first thing he will do he tried to wipe out Israel. And I said, how thoughtful. What has Israel had done to him? What Israel has, I mean, what problems do we have with Israel? But you know, it's the whole conflict in the Middle East, as we as Christians know exactly what is happening down in the Middle East, so it's not something that we ignore concerning. But it just shows exactly our mentality and our minds, how we see each other, and what we can do with each other. If we just have a little respect, a little politeness and being thoughtful of each other, things like that wouldn't happen. And sometimes we use ourselves and we think that we are, we are it. We don't have to pay attention to anybody else. We are the boss. And it's I and I, whatever I do or whatever I think, my choices, or it does not think of the other persons who suffer or really need our help. Once we satisfy our own personal needs and our own personal goals, we don't think about anybody else. And that is real selfishness. And God doesn't teach us that way. So you see what happens? How the world thinks. It does not think in the line how God thinks. It's always different. And how should we align ourselves? We should believe in man, or should we believe in God? We have a lovely lesson this morning. And it shows the unity with the church, God, the Holy Spirit. Everything is one in one. And we have to abide with the laws and be obedient to God's words. But when we draw ourselves from God's words, we think just as the president of Iran. Of Iran. Whatever I want to do, I will do it regardless to what. And this God does not enjoy. Acts 27 verse 3. 
He read as follows. And the next day, we touched at Sidon, and Julius courteously entreated Paul and gave him liberty to go into the, to his friends to refresh himself. And who are these people? We noticed that Paul was saving. He's a, he's a situation for Paul, and he was entreated. And the people that he was entreated to follow the, le the, line, the lesson, we noticed the type of people that was entreating Paul. Those was actually barbarians. But they entreat Paul, because Paul, why he was, was, was interested, um, entreated? You see, the Spirit of God, regardless of who you are and what you are, God could control the situation. Once God is in charge, he can humble you. And they pay respect. They treat, God, they treat Paul with courtesy and extend those things unto him. And we too, is an example, we as Christians, should entreat each other with love. Loving to share, enjoy our moments, good moments together, to uplift each other. That's the most important thing as Christians. What you must try to do is to edify, encourage each other so we can build at that spiritual house, we can grow unto perfection. And this is what is God has required of us as Christians. To assist each other, to help us to build and to grow, to become more knowledgeable concerning the word of God, so we can reach that stage of perfection as God Himself. Would that be wonderful? Should we not enjoy those things? Yes. Is there things in the world that is much better as God is trying to teach us? What are we going to gain from the world? What are the world is showing us? Do we love popularity? And this is the reason, brethren, wherever you go, and the experience that I have in wherever you're going to go, the church is a very small congregation. The reason why it is small? People love to be popular. They love to be with the crowd. They like to be in big things. And you see, the, the, the pure word of God, they don't look at that. They look at the company that they are keeping. The image. And that's why people always come to the church. After a short time, they will leave. Because they didn't come for the word of God, they came for something else. And the people who are here, sometimes they take members here with them because they were not grounded on the pillar, the true pillar of the truth. And this is why when some people come and they go out to the others, they were just here, just warming the seats. And does not paying heed to the word of God. It's important, brethren, that when we come to church, we will be serious, very serious in what has been taught, what has been preached, what has been taught. We must take heed of the word of God and ensure that we put it in our lives, and not only for ourselves, but for others to enjoy. So it's very important that we do those things.